I'm gonna get you up to speed with Helm in 10 minutes or less. You're gonna learn what Helm is and why Helm is useful. And if you stick around until the end of this video, you're gonna learn how to create a chart. You're gonna learn how to template them, how to deploy them. And we'll even look at how to deploy them from an external repo. So what is Helm? Helm is just a tool for writing and deploying reusable Kubernetes manifest with a templating system around it. It's basically a package manager for Kubernetes, except you have to set up the sources yourself. There's a bunch of different sources you can use. We'll take a look at a couple of them later. You can install Helm using any of these methods right here. You can also go ahead straight over to the GitHub repo and install it from there by clicking this link or any of them that match your system, downloading the file, jumping over to your terminal and just run in tar xvzf helm. And then all you need to do is sudo install hyphen o for roots for the owner, hyphen g roots for the group, m755 for the mode. And then we'll do Linux AMD64 helm and we'll throw that straight into user local bin. And that's it. We now have Helm installed. We can verify it with Helm version and there it is. But why bother using Helm when I can just go ahead and create a bunch of Kubernetes manifests and deploy them as I need to, you know, just stick them in Git and update them as I want, right? Well, yeah, technically that's fine, but think about something like external DNS. You download that and then you have to configure it for one of the many cloud providers that exist. By using the Helm chart, that work's done for you. All you need to do is fill in a few variables and then off you go. It saves time, it saves effort, and it just makes life a bit easier. So let's jump over to my IDE and we'll take a look at the Helm CLI and how we can create a chart. So in here, I've got a charts directory. I'm gonna CD into that and we'll go ahead and create a Helm chart. It's really straightforward. We just do Helm, create, and then the name of our chart. I'm just gonna call this my Nginx app. So we'll take a look at what just got created. So if I expand charts, we can see we've got a new directory called my Nginx app. We've got a charts directory. We've got a templates directory. We've got a Helm ignore file. We've got a charts.yaml and we've got a values.yaml. Let's step through each one of these and see what they do. So first we'll take a look at charts. Charts is for subcharts or dependencies. If your chart requires other charts to be deployed, then you can stick them straight in here and when you deploy your chart, they'll get deployed with it. The Helm ignore file basically works like a git ignore file. They just get ignored when you package up the chart itself. So when you run Helm package to create your chart that you would upload to a repo, these get ignored. None of this stuff will end up in the chart. The chart.yaml file just lists the details of your chart for end users who want to use it. So the API version, that's just what it is. Leave it as it is unless Helm tell you to change it. The name is just something that will be displayed to a user when they run Helm search repo and they wanna look for your package. That's the name they'll look for. Using a classic registry anyway, if you're using OCI, it works a bit differently, but we'll cover that later. Then we've got description. Much like the name, this is what the user will see when they come to search for your repo. You'll see some descriptions later and you'll actually see one of my charts uses that default description because I never changed it. We'll cover that shortly. Next, we've got the type set to application. Now the application is the one you will see most commonly. This is because that is just a standard Helm chart. The other one is libraries. This is something that chart developers will use. It's basically a bunch of useful utilities. We're gonna be dealing with an application this time, so I'm not gonna go into libraries right now. Next, we've got the version, which is just the version of the chart itself, app version, which is the version of the application that runs inside the chart. So for example, here, when Helm created this chart, it said, we're gonna use Nginx version 1.16, but the chart version is just 010. Next is the values file. Now this is just a file full of variables. That's all it is. So if we take a look at this, you can see it's just YAML objects all the way through. We can specify a bunch of different things and you'll see when we come to actually use this later in the templates, we'll do dot values, dot something, for example, image. And then if we want the repository, dot repository. So it'd be dot values, dot image, dot repository. It's just a bunch of variables that will be used in the templating. Finally, we have the templates themselves. So the templates are the Kubernetes manifest with some Go templating built into it. This is the stuff that's passed through the Helm rendering engine and will be rendered out into Kubernetes manifests that can be deployed onto the cluster. So the first thing we see is tests. This is just a test that we can run after the chart is deployed to make sure everything is functioning as we expect it to. So W get against Nginx, that's a good enough test. If it responds, it's up and running. The next thing we'll look at is notes.txt. So this here, this has a bunch of information in there. You can see there's some Go templating already happening. So there's an if statement here, there's a loop here, and there's just some general lines here. These, these lines and this information is printed out when the chart is deployed. So when someone does a Helm install command for your chart, this information will be printed out at the end. Next, we'll take a look at the helpers.template. So the helpers template 
it's just a way of defining more variables. They're actually name templates, but for the sake of understanding, we'll call them variables for now. And these are things that can be reused across the entire app. So let's just take a look at a couple of them as an example. So if we take a look at the app labels, we have a define, which defines a new variable. It then says myngenx.app.labels. We put a label in there. We include myngenx-app.chart, which is this bit up here, a different definition. And then we have an include and my app dot selector labels. So if we look down, we have these ones here. And then we have an if statement in there that basically says if the chart dot app version is set, then we'll use that particular app version. And then finally, we have a dot release dot service. If you look around a little bit further, let's just have a look through. We can see something like this. We have name equals to a default of chart name or values name override. And what this is saying is we're going to default it to the chart name. So whatever is set in here and if we have another value then we will use that value so that value will be values.name override and if we have a look at our values file we have a name override right here so that's what that's saying it's saying use the chart name unless this one is supplied so default to the chart name and that's it so we can use values we can use chart values we can use release values and we can define brand new variables all within this helper. Finally, let's take a look at the deployment.yaml and maybe the service as well, just to show you how templating works. So if we take a look at the deployment.yaml, we have a standard Kubernetes object here. There's a few extra curly brace stuff going on in here that we might not be too familiar with. This is a standard deployment, but what we're doing is we're inserting variables into it meaning that we can modify things on the fly using that values file. So let's take a look at what this first thing is. This says include my nginx hyphen app dot full name and then a dot at the end which basically says put it here. Well we can see that here look we've got define my nginx app full name and then it's got all this stuff that we just talked about and that is basically just being inserted right here. So the include says include the definition from the helpers file and put it here. And we've got another one here look we can see include my nginx app dot labels and then we're going to indent that by four. So what does that do? Well, one, two, three, four. It just indents it by four. And then we have an if statement here. So we're saying, you know, if auto scaling is not enabled, then we'll set replicas. Otherwise we won't set that. And you'll see we've got this horizontal pod auto scaler here, which also does that check to say, if it is enabled, set this up. You can start to see how this templating comes together. Let's take a look at that image bit we looked at as well. So if we go back to the values file, we had an image with a repository, pool policy and tag. So if we go to our deployment, we should expect to see that under the image. And sure enough, there it is. We have dot values, dot image, dot repository. And then we have this here, which says dot values, dot image, dot tag, or a default of dot chart dot app version. So we're saying default to this value if this isn't set. Now that's all good and everything, but how do we actually deploy this stuff? How can we see what's being templated out by the engine? Pretty simple. We just do Helm template, give it a name, whatever that name might be, just call it your release. So I'm just gonna do my Nginx release. And then we reference the chart. In this case, I'm developing this chart, so I might as well just reference it locally. And to do that, I just give it the path to the chart from my current location, which is my Nginx app. So if you don't provide a values file, it will use all the defaults in values.yaml. So let's render that out. And we can see here, we just got some standard Kubernetes manifest out. We could pipe that now into a kubectl apply command, and this would deploy that templated content straight into Kubernetes. The problem with that is we couldn't then use Helm to manage it. So the way it works is if you do Helm install something, Helm can manage that release. It can upgrade it, it can uninstall it, you know, it can test it, it can do all those things. If you do it this way with kubectl apply, it will just deploy it like standard Kubernetes manifest. So ideally, you want to be using that Helm command. But before we continue, let's just have a look at what that values option looks like as well. So I'm going to copy this value file, we'll call it my hyphen values. I'm just going to delete all of this and we'll just want image tag and I'm going to set that to 1.21.0. Now, if we have a look at the deployment in the output we've just rendered, we can see it's got the 1.16.0. So it's used the chart default. So we will do the same command again, but this time I'll do hyphen f my values. We will see that the image has now been updated. So we can see here, look, image, nginx, 1.21.0. So now we have this stuff. How do we actually deploy it? And it's the same as what it was before, except we just replace template with install. And I'm going to install it with the values file in the same way. So I'm just going to hit enter from that. We've had a response back now telling us the namespace, the last deployed, the status, the revision, and there's those notes. So that notes.txt, that's where it comes out right there. Now what I want to do is say, let's test this chart. How can I do that? Well, if you remember, there was that test directory. We can make use of that now. So we can do Helm test, and then the name of the release. 
And what that will do is deploy that pod that's in the test directory, which will run the wget command against nginx. And if it works, we get a succeeded. And if it did fail, then that succeeded would show you a failure, an error, something like that. As long as your tests are good, you'll know straight away if something has failed. So what if we do want to go ahead and uninstall this? Well, we can just do helm ls. Let's get the name of our release and that will list our name. We can do helm uninstall the name of the release. The last thing I want to talk to you about is using repos as a source of helm charts. There's two ways of doing this. One is the classic way of doing it, if you like, and the other is using OCI, which is the Open Container Initiative. There's a company called Bitnami and they have a bunch of charts. Let's just jump over and have a look at that. So over here, we've got the Bitnami repo. You can see it's a massive library for Kubernetes and they do helm install, the name of your release, and then the OCI address. So let's just jump into their Bitnami directory. We're just going to do the Nginx one again, and it will give us the install command, which is this. We'll paste that in. This time, it's coming from a repo. So we'll see the pull from Docker in just a second. There it is. And there it's installed. Finally, I want to show you one other thing, which is the classic repo. So if I do helm repo list, we can see all these repos here. Now there's an absolute ton here. I've even got my own right here. These are all helm repos. This allows you to have a library of things available directly from your machine. You can just use helm search repo for something. So for example, I recently created a chart for Jellyfin because I wanted a Jellyfin server and there wasn't a chart available. So I just used the images that they were available and made a chart out of it. So what I can do to find that chart in a repo is helm search repo jellyfin. And we can see we've got drew forward slash jellyfin. And I've got a chart version of 0.1.0. .0. I've got my app version, which I did actually update. And then a description, which is the default. All I would have to do to install this is helm install the name of the release. So jellyfin and then drew forward slash jellyfin to reference the repo that I want to install it from. And that, that'd that be it. I could run install now and that would install Jellyfin. And the way we add a repo like this, Helm repo add the name of the repo, whatever it might be, and then the name of the repo. You then run Helm repo update, which updates the repo locally, and that's it. And there you have it. Helm in 10 minutes. I think I did it in 10 minutes or less. We'll see. Liar. You've learned creating a chart. You've learned templating them, deploying them, installing them, upgrading them. You've learned a bunch of stuff already. There's obviously a lot more we can learn. There's things like hosting your own repo, for example, if you want to host your own chart repo. There is subcharts that we mentioned earlier. There is enforcing values. We can say that certain things are required. We can say that certain things have to be a string or they have to be a Boolean. So we can do all this extra stuff on top. And then there's a wealth of template knowledge as well. So I'll do another video at some point. Make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so that you get notified about that video. And for the sake of engagement, why not like this one? If you're still here now, you might as well. Just give it a little like. And while you wait for the next big hit, why not just brush up on your Kubernetes knowledge in one of these videos? They'll help you with your templating in the future.